Hello, I'm Beth, a nurse practitioner with Physician's Choice Infusion Clinic. Welcome. We're here today to discuss with you how to infuse your IV antibiotics at home. When you receive your products from our pharmacy, they'll be shipped to you in a box. When you get this box, bring it in, open it up, and there'll be a folder in there that you're gonna to wanna to take out, and then there will be a bag in there full of your medication. Take the bag of your medication out of this box, this insulated cold box, and put the medication in your refrigerator and everything else can stay out of the refrigerator and can be room temperature. Okay, so we're gonna discuss the devices that can be used to infuse your medication. This device here is called an elastomeric device or a grenade. It's a pressurized little infusion ball that your medicine will flow in. It's pressurized so it does not need an IV pole. The other device is your regular IV bag. You will get a disposable IV pole with your supplies if your medication comes in an IV bag. You'll hook it up and then you'll be able to put it on the pole and walk around your house. Most of our infusions come in the elastomeric device. Once you hook this up, you can put it in your pocket and walk around your house. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do, 30 minutes to an hour before you infuse your medication, you take it out of the refrigerator and you warm it up at room temperature. You don't wanna warm it up in the microwave, you don't wanna warm it up in the stove, you don't wanna warm it up under hot water. It can affect and change your medication. It needs to warm up on your counter to room temperature. And the reason we do this is because the cold medication can make you really cold, plus it can spasm your vessels and we don't wanna do that. Okay, so your medicine's warmed up and you're ready to infuse, so you're gonna set everything up. You're gonna take out your folder that's in the box, our pharmacy folder. In that folder, it's gonna be your orders. It's gonna be a list of the supplies that are in the box. It's going to have um, this elastomeric device, how to use it, instruction sheet will be in there. You're gonna to wanna to pull that out. Your first visit from your home health nurse, she will pull this out and fill it out. And on there, it has a place for your medication your, your scheduled times for your medication. And on there, there's the SASH protocol. We're gonna be using the SASH protocol procedure when, we, when you infuse your medication. We'll go over that in a second, okay? So you're, you're ready to go, your ball is warm. When you take it out of the refrigerator, uh, when you first take it out of the refrigerator, you check your ball, there will be a label on it, you check for your name, you check for the date of birth, and you check for the name of the medication. The medication will be on your instruction sheet and it'll also be in your blue pharmacy folder, okay? If, you, if there is a problem with any of that, you don't use it, you set it aside and later you can call the pharmacy and let them know about it and you take another ball of medication out of the refrigerator so it can warm up, okay? Once again, you check your label for your name, your date of birth, the medication and the dosage of the medication. You check your ball to make sure there's no clumps floating around in the fluid, that there's no cracks or leaks in the ball. Once it's okay, you take the paper off, there'll be paper on your tubing, you take the paper off, you set your tubing down, and you let it sit for 30 to 60 minutes to warm up. When that time has passed and it's warm, you wanna set everything up. First, you wash your hands well with soap and water, and then we're gonna use that SASH protocol we spoke about. S stands for saline, A stands for administration of medication, S stands for saline, H stands for heparin, okay? All of your syringes will come in a cellophane wrapper like this. You rip them open and you have to prepare your syringes. You hit them to get all the bubbles to go to the top, okay? can take your cap off. Now, you wanna push the air out, but if you pushed right now, there's a seal around the plunger and it would it sticks. So you'd be pushing and then it would release and you'd squirt the ceiling. So to avoid that, you just pull the plunger towards the floor just a little bit to break that seal. And then you push up on it and get the air out till there's just a little bubble of fluid at the top. You do that to each one of your syringes. You do it to your saline, 
you do it to your other saline and you do that to your heparin. Okay, you also are going to want to prepare the your IV elastomeric device. You're going to want to make sure it's primed. What that means, primed, means that there's fluid all the way through the line. They come from your pharma, from the pharmacy, primed already. But we do a little double check. We check to make sure you don't see any air bubbles in your line. There's a clamp on here. You open up the clamp. Remove the end and you let a little drip, drip of fluid come to the top, turn it off and recap it. If you touch the end of the cap to anything, you contaminate it, get some germs on it, you want to wipe it with alcohol, okay? So you have your saline, your antibiotic, your saline and your heparin all ready. So next is to use your, to access your your pick line. So you access your pick line. People can have a single lumen, single port, or a double or two of them. Right now we're just going to show you how to use the single lumen. Okay? So at the end of your lumen is a microclave. Okay, this always this stays on. Okay. What you're going to do is take your alcohol, you're going to wipe the end, the tip of your microclave for 15 to 30 seconds briskly. Okay, then you're gonna take your saline, take the cap off. If you touch that to anything, let's say we touched it to something, then we have to take alcohol and we have to wipe it again, 15 to 30 seconds to make sure there's no germs or contamination on the end of it because we don't wanna push it into your body. Okay, your saline is ready. This is spring loaded, straight on, push and turn and it's on. So when you flush your line, you push and release, push and release, push and release, push and release, push and release. If you notice any bubbles at the end of the syringe by the plunger, you don't push them in. We don't want air pushed into that line. You will stop, okay? Now, the reason we push and release is because the catheter is close to your heart, and if you push really hard, it could cause a catheter to flap around. We don't want it flapping around there by your heart. So you just push and release, push and release. Okay, now the next thing you're gonna do, you already have your tubing ready and everything on your medication. You take the cap off your medication, don't touch the end. If you touch the end, you have to clean it with alcohol. Keep the Blue port, your microclave, clean. Don't touch it to anything. If you touch it to anything, you have to clean it again with alcohol. But we've kept them both clean, so you go straight on, spring-loaded, you push, and you turn, and it's on, okay? So, then you open up your clamp and let your medication infuse, okay? On this tubing, there's this little vent is a vent right here. Some people will tape it to their skin and walk around their house. You don't want to do that. You don't want to block this vent. It needs the air to come in to help the pressurized bag infuse and it also, if there's little itty, bitty bubbles, the bubbles will go out through the vent. So don't tape over the vent. So your medication will infuse on your instruction sheet. Your nurse, home health nurse, should write on there how long it takes to infuse. 30 minutes, an hour, sometimes 90 minutes. Depends on what your medication is. So when it's done infusing, it will look like this, okay? This ball has a bag inside of this plastic bag full of medication, okay? And when it's full of medication, it looks like this. As the medicine infuses, that inside plastic bag will shrink down and will keep shrinking, okay? And as the inside shrinks down, the outside gets crinkly, okay? So if you hold your ball up to the light, you can see the cylinder in the center. You'll be able to see if there's still medication inside that ball. And I like to tell my, my patients, if this cylinder looks like it's pregnant or postpartum, all the medication hasn't gone in. So when you can see just the cylinder and no bulges on either side of the cylinder, cylinder all your medication is in. Okay, so once the medication has infused and is done, you clamp it to stop it. 
you disconnect your medication, don't touch the end of the port, keep it, keep it clear. Oops, I touched the end of the syringe. So with my other hand, so we take the alcohol and we clean it for 15 to 30 seconds. Make sure you don't touch your blue port. If you touch that also, you have to clean it. Okay, both of them are clean. Straight on, push and turn and it's on. And then you pump and release, pump and release. The reason we do this, we wanna push the rest of the medication through the line so all the medication gets in your body and we wanna clear the line. There we go. Then you remove it and then you use your heparin next. Okay, and then you pump and release, pump and release, pump and release, okay? If you have more than one port, leave your heparin on. Just leave it there, clamp that port shut. There'll be a clamp up at the top, okay? And then take care of your second port because sometimes it, you can get confused as to which port you undo your medication, let the port fall, then you don't know, oh, which port did I just flush? So this way you know you just finished this port and then you can flush the other port. And then when you're done flushing the other port and your heparin's on the other port, take your heparin off, hold your clamp, and take your heparin off, and you're done. You can wrap it around and fold it up and protect it, okay? Now, while you have your pick line in, do not go swimming, do not take a bath. You can get some press and seal cling wrap wrap it around and tape it and you can take a shower but protect this okay there's a dressing over over your pick line if it gets soiled or any fluid underneath it you need to let or it's coming off you let your home health agency know and they they need to change it because it's a sterile dressing and we want to keep it sterile okay if at any time there's drainage there's pus it's red or swelling around the insertion site swelling in your arm and your neck and your face that's that's an ER visit, okay? Um, if you have any pain, it'll be sore after the insertion, but if you have significant pain, call your provider and uh, they might have you go to the ER. If you have a red streak going up your arm, you go to the ER. If at any point the catheter is coming out, you have to go to the ER. If at any point it gets cut, you have to go to the ER, okay? Um, if you have any questions, at any time in your folder, pharmacy folder in your box will be the number of our pharmacy. Uh, feel free to call the pharmacy if you have any questions or you need more supplies. Um, that covers it. I wanna thank you for your time today and I wish you speedy healing.